Guitar Practice Session 92324. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I first go through the practice session and then give you a recap of what I've been doing so that you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me to put together a routine so I can be somewhat consistent with the practice, allow me to verbalize what it is I'm trying to learn, helping to get it in my mind, possibly provide information for others that are working on similar types of things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to try to learn the things that I'm trying to get in my mind. Remembering that these practice sessions might be organized a little bit different than other practice sessions that you've been looking into or working with. We, of course, have the Excel spreadsheet, the best tool, I think, for doing these types of practice sessions where I'm going to put the low or heavy string on top so I have everything basically going the same way. Me behind the guitar seeing the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling, and then top, bottom, left to right, which will match what I'm seeing on the screen here as I'm trying to map out where my fingers are going in my Excel worksheet. And I'll also flip around the guitar for much of the practice session trying to line up the actual fretboard on the guitar to the same kind of lineup that we see here on the screen. So it will match basically what you would be doing from the perspective of behind uh, the guitar. Now this time we're going to be looking at the Phrygian mode, remembering that whenever I think about these modes, I'm going to give them an absolute mode number, which might be a little bit different than what you've seen elsewhere. But I think it's very useful to do because all of the modes, you can think of them as kind of fractals of each other. They all fit together. You can derive any of the modes from any other mode. But of course, we need to orientate ourselves in some way. And in Western music, that is usually what the major scale is doing, otherwise known as what I would call absolute mode number one, the Ionian mode. So I'm going to count it as mode number one. Therefore, the Phrygian in relation to mode number one will be the absolute mode number three. So I'm going to be imagining ourselves in the Phrygian mode. The, we have relative positions to that mode, the first through seventh positions, these being relative because they will change depending on what mode we are in, but they will also be associated with the, the actual other modes. And those modes, I'm going to give the absolute uh, mode numbers. So that's how we'll work through it. We're going to be working on what I would call uh, position number three. But I'm also thinking about how we can name that position different names, which again might help us with different perspectives so that we can communicate with other people as well as basically just visualize the fretboard differently. And I'm playing with the caged system, numbering system, and basically... Uh, breaking up the guitar into its five chunks, the five shapes that we can name after the open shapes, the caged system working best when we're comparing it to the related major mode, which is the Ionian mode or possibly with the minor mode, but we're basically naming all the shapes based on the open shapes in relation to the major uh, scale typically. So that always has been a little bit wonky for me when we're trying to break out the guitar in different modes uh, but uh, the, and, and one way we could do that is with the five note pentatonic scale but the five note pentatonic scale fits beautifully on the major and minor or aeolian modes and doesn't fit so well in some of the other modes such as the phrygian because the phrygian one of the notes that are removed are going to be in it's the fifth the fifth for example is removed and also one of the major half steps that make the phrygian is not there in terms of this Lydian or the F, right? So, but I could still use the skeleton shape so that I can name the shape after the cage system, the open uh, shape, which in this case would be like a, a D shape related to the, to the C major, and then stack on top of that the, the skeleton of the pentatonic shape, even though I'm in a Phrygian mode, and then add to that the two notes that are missing, making it go from the five note pentatonic to the full Phrygian, which I really kind of need if I'm playing in the Phrygian mode. I think that's really useful because then that helps me to orientate the shapes because the five note pentatonic shapes are unique 
to the open positions of the three note chords, whereas the seven note uh, shapes are not. So we'll play with that. I'll also be going back and forth between our analogies of the house double stop position and then these positions with the, uh, which I'm calling the hamburger and the barbell, which are the two main ways that we often break people, break things out. And this isn't just me. I'm not just making this stuff up. I'm making some stuff up. But I'm not making the way to break these things out. These are things I've seen other people doing, breaking out the fretboard into these this shape and then breaking out the fretboard into the pentatonic down from playing it all at one time to its components, which is usually the hamburger and the barbell. And once you start breaking it down into those littler pieces, you're going to start to see the fretboard. You're going to look for those little pieces in the fretboard. So that's why, which is great, because that means you're going to start making new lines and playing things a little bit differently as you associate these shapes basically together. And if you learn it, the same guitar in different shapes and are re re able to switch them in your mind, kind of like switching a Rubik's Cube from having one side being all one color to the other side to all color to making a checkered pattern or whatever, whatever you want to do, the more you're able to do that, that by definition is what knowing the thing is. And that is more, the more that I think about it, I think that's true. So that's what we'll play here. And then we'll work on our inter in intervals going forward uh, and backwards from this E to this E and from this E to this E, although we won't go backwards because I get I run out of time. And then and then I just kind of noodle around like at the end of this thing. Uh, I don't think I do anything. I just I, I, I don't play in Phrygian all that much. So it's probably not the best. Uh, do I do it? I think I just try to play in Phrygian, which is kind of like a, a heavier uh, uh, sound that I don't play in Phrygian all that much. So I'm just, so it's probably not great, but I was just kind of tinkering around practice session in Phrygian. Okay. Continuing on with what I would call shape number three, looking at what I would call mode number three, that being the Phrygian mode, remembering that I'm using absolute mode numbers as they are related to the major scale, otherwise known as mode number one, the Ionian mode. In other words, if the major scale mode number one is Ionian, then the Phrygian is the third in relation to that major scale. Therefore, we're going to be in the Phrygian mode. We're going to be listing the relative positions first through seventh, those positions changing as we go from scale to scale, but keeping the mode numbers related to them the same. So the first will be mode number three, the Phrygian mode. The second will be mode number four, the Lydian mode, and so on and so forth. We're going to be looking at the intervals, noting the major difference within the interval for the Phrygian, which is a minor mode, and that's going to be the minor second, making the minor mode even more minor than the main minor, the Aeolian, because it basically has that minor second where the Aeolian has a major second. So this is actually even heavier or darker, maybe if you think about it like that, than the main minor mode. Okay, and then we're going to be going through our shape on the right hand side and I'm going to be constructing two analogies or stories as we basically try to come up with a story about the fretboard, looking at the fretboard different ways, which I think is really important to do because a lot of times I used to think in such a way that I would say, if I learn the fretboard, I just want to learn it my way. And then when other people say how they do it, I'm going to interpret what they do to see it my way. And that's fine to do because then you're kind of, by doing that, you're actually deconstructing, looking at the difference between your way and someone else's way. But I think the real benefit of doing that is th seeing the connection. This is how I see it. This is how they see it. This is how I reconcile the two, like a bank reconciliation, right? So now I, I can see the two tied together. These are what the differences are between the two views. That actually gives you kind of more understanding as opposed to the, the mindset that I kind of had more, which was, I'm just, I just want to see it this one way because I know that one way, right? It's good to know one way, but it's, it would be better. You, in my opinion, the more I think about this, it, you have the definition of understanding something is to be able to see it from multiple different perspectives. So that's kind of like, if you accept that as the definition of knowing the fretboard, then 
then our goal then would be how what are all well, how many different ways can I view the fretboard and be able to switch in my mind from viewing it from one way to the other and what are the pros and cons of doing that and one of the big pros and cons is that every time you look at the fretboard from a new perspective you will most likely come up with different lines as you play up and down uh, the fretboard because you're grouping the strings together in in different ways so if you visualize this fretboard on one string you're probably going to be playing once you know up and down this way more if you visualize the fretboard as a, a particular shape from top to bottom but you can only really construct that shape from top to bottom then you're going to be playing a lot of top to bottom stuff and you might not be playing at the bottom as much because you don't really you can't really visualize this by itself unless you played from top to bottom and if we chunk it out into pieces then then we can kind of more of a jigsaw puzzle that we'll start to see whatever pieces that we chunked it out into as we visualize the fretboard so that is all to say that i'm trying to work into the my analogy the pentatonic structure which is a structure that many people find very useful to see the fretboard it's very popular and that of course is uh, you use the caged system so you have the open positions back here that that we have and then we can name the five shapes that we break out the fretboard by those uh, open positions which is a little wonky because then we have to uh, we, we have to say well this is like a G shape but I'm not in a G chord but you kind of you can get past that the benefit of it though is that you're able to basically name the five note pentatonic shapes based on the three note open shape positions and there and and even though you're playing three note chords they fit uniquely into the five note pentatonic making it able to name the five note shape based on a three note chord now the thing that always kind of messed me up with that is that if you look at the full seven note shape then then the the three note chords shapes don't fit uniquely into one seven note chunk of the fretboard that's why if you if you look at it this way you almost have to build the pentatonic first as the as the skeleton to outline your shape and then add to to this added two notes the other reason i i never really like that as much is because it works quite well with the with the uh the, the scales that we play in which is going to be usually the Ionian and which is the major scale and the Aeolian uh, mode number six which is the minor scale uh, but but it doesn't work as much for others because uh, the notes that are missing are going to be important uh, to whatever other mode we're playing because they're going to be in the three note chord so so i always thought that if i wanted to learn all the modes then learning the pentatonic isn't going to be as helpful but even though it, it but i'm starting to think now that you could still easily do that looking at the shape and then just adding the bits to the shape so even though this time for example i'm going to be looking at a phrygian which is not lending itself to the normal pentatonic that we consider that lends itself beautifully to the major and the minor mode and i'm going to have to add another uh, note to it in order for it, it to fit in but i can still use the skeleton in order to map out the shape and then add the extra note so that's my long kind of explanation of or my thought process on what i'm trying to get down in my mind okay so if we do that let's first list out the ones that are, aren't in our shape so it's the f over here that is going to be outside it's not in the pentatonic so I'm going to make that one uh, yellow. And that, of course, is uh, the Lydian. And the other one is the Locrian, which happens to be the fifth here. So the Locrian is going to be out. So if I look at our, our pentatonic within this shape, then those are the two strings that are out. Now, notice that that kind of causes a problem for the Phrygian because the fifth is the B right and that's the that's the note that we took out now the fifth is not as important as the first and the third because it's not really like the flavor note it's kind of more like a filler note so you can still kind of play Phrygian using that same and just 
take out the fifth, but we'd probably want to add in the fifth, typically, especially when we're playing the, the, the minor uh, chord that is in uh, the Phrygian, if we want to add that fifth to the minor chord. So that's going to be the general idea. Now, if I look at my shape over here, I, I can call this shape different things. I call it shape number three because I call this shape number one, and that means this is shape number two, and that means this is shape number three. A lot of people do that. It's common convention. But uh, I can also call it, if I name it by the top note in the shape, if I played from top to bottom, and I have to define that to myself, I'd, I would call it a Dorian shape because if I played this from top to bottom, it would be a Dorian mode. But to, to say that, I have to define to myself it's a Dorian if I play starting from D to D or emphasize the D, right, of the shape. Otherwise, it's gonna be another mode if I, if I focused on another note in the shape. A lot of people might call it, according to the caged system, the D shape, because if I, and, and to do that, I have to look at the related uh, major scale, which is is here Ionian mode number one is a C. So if I find that C and I and I build my shape on it, it's this kind of thin shape up top. Or you should I should be able to do it like this, but I don't play it like that. You can see the D up here. You could play just these three notes. So it's that D shape up at the top. So some people will use that and 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 name name this whole shape the D shape now that again that's it's a C chord D shape but it fits uniquely into the five note pentatonic doesn't fit uniquely into the seven note entire mode right the entire scale okay so but I couldn't I could name the shape that way I'm also trying to work on well how can I name these shapes possibly by the mode that I'm in so in, for example I'm in the 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 Phrygian mode which is going to be if I look where is that on my shape the uh, the Phrygian is going to be let me see it's going to be the second note in the shape so I'd like to name it something like the second the second note in shape Phrygian mode right in other words I'm trying to name this shape by the mode that I'm in so 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 if I look at this shape, it's the sec it's the shape with the second the second note in the shape Phrygian mode. I get most people don't really do that because most people don't name the shape by where the Phrygian is. They name it by where the major is, or possibly the minor, and then go from there. But if I can see each shape by saying by knowing just by memorizing where the sh wh which mode is in each one, that might be useful. So I'm gonna just kind of play with that. Uh, and see if that is useful to me. All right, and then so so now we're gonna say we're on uh, the E here. So if I was on, for example, if I saw this shape and I said, okay, I'm trying to play Phrygian here, but I know this is the Dorian mode, right? I know this is the Dorian <laughs> mode. How can I get to the Phrygian? Well, the, 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 the Dorian is the second of the major scale, the Ionian scale. So I can say uh, the Dorian is the second and the Phrygian is the third. So if I'm on uh, the second, so if I count this up and I say, well, this is the second and I'm thinking in terms of the major scale, this is two, then obviously the next one up would be three. And that's how I can get from uh, the Dorian to the Phrygian. You, we might also say, well, if I know where the C is, I know the C is down here and I, and I might name this as the caged system and say, well, there's my C down here. How can I get from the C to the Phrygian? Well, th if the C is the first, then I'm trying to get to the Phrygian, uh, which is the third, so I can count up from the C, one, two, three, and that gets me to this E down here, which is the Phrygian, and then I'd, I'd have to see, well, well, the octave of that is up here, if I know my, my octave shapes, right? Uh, so I can kind of work it out that way. Okay. And then if I, so now I'm going to say, we're going to say, looking at our shapes, I've broken the shapes out into these shapes. I've made a, a, a story about the double stop house shapes, which I can see all over the fretboard, right? And then 
the house uh, double stop shape, and then and then the two note per string hamburger uh, or meat of the hamburger. And then I'm also at the same time going to try to list this same stuff out in terms of the pentatonic shape, which I'm calling hamburger and barbell, where we're only playing the outsides of the shapes and then add the two extra notes, which are the colored notes that are outside of my hamburger and barbell. So those are the two ways I'm going to try to build in my mind to be able to think of them simultaneously uh, in both of those ways as we go through our exercise. Okay. So then if so, if I start on top here, I'm going to say we're going to where where are my where are my roots here? If I'm in the Phrygian, where does the Phrygian live? Well, the Phrygian is not a major. Uh, so so if I look at my box here, here's the box. This is the bottom of the box. That's why I keep on going down here because this string and this string are the same. So if I look at this one, it's in it's the basement it's the phrygian we can think of it kind of I, I always think of it as like the metal mode where because it has a really heavy sound because it's it's got that uh, minor second so it's more minor than the main minor and so it hangs out in the basement of the house so if it's in the box if it's in the house it's always going to be in the same position in the house right it's always in the bottom left of the box right it's in the bottom left of the box but it's been shifted up here because of the fault line and so on and so forth so that's where it is here. If we think about it in terms of our hamburger and our barbell analogy, we can say it's at the top left of the hamburger. And those uh, have the two kind of heavy, I think, you know, the heaviest minor sounds on the barbells are on the ends of the barbell. Notice the barbell has been shifted up here because of the uh, fault line. So this is where the fault line is. So this A would usually be back here if it weren't for the fault line. So this would be like the weights of the of the barbell. And we only play the ends of the barbell. So we play this, this, and then this and this. The center of the barbell, the F and the B, those are the ones that are removed if we played the five note pentatonic. So the Phrygian is in the seven note or the five note pentatonic. And it's like at the weight, it's the top weight side of the left hand side, which is the minor side of the barbell. And on the right hand side, we have the major side of the barbell, which is C and then the most popular second most popular major, I think, which is the mixolydian. And then in the hamburger, the Phrygian is at the top right bun of the hamburger, which I haven't really made a story yet, except for it's kind of hanging out. The bun is made of the entire bun is made out of out of minor modes because you have the the Dorian that kind of encompasses the bun. And then on the right of the bun, the top part, you got the Phrygian, but then the bottom kind of like the base of the bun is actually the thing holding it up is actually the C, the C uh, or the, the major. And then the meat, the meat of the of the hamburger are what I think of as the Ameri more American sounding modes because they have that flat seven the minor and the mixolydian okay that's my story so we're gonna we're gonna keep building that story all right so there's where so if i started here we're at the we're at the bottom of what i would call the double stop house or at the top of what i would call uh the top bun of the hamburger and then this f is of course outside so if i want to add that f from my pentatonic, I think of the hamburger with a cap on it, a ball cap, a baseball cap that's looking towards the suns, which is out here in the ocean where the, that's where the, the hole of the guitar is. And then we go down to the two note per string. Uh, what did I do that right? Yeah, then we go down to the two note per string. I call this the flat or the one, it's, it's just got one string. If we break the guitar out into our house, uh, double stop house, house double stop, and then two note per string shape. And if we think of it as our hamburger, it's the meat of the hamburger. This is the shape, the one shape that is the same under both analogies. And then we go then to what I would call the top of the double stop box shape, which is going to be here. And notice we always go back after the two note per string hamburger, unless we're on the fault line down here. If I think about it in terms of the hamburger analogy, 
were at the bottom of the hamburger, which normally would be just these two, but then we have to add a little bit of support to the bottom of the bun to the left of it to support and off balance the baseball cap that's leaning us forward to the top. And so that's where we add this B. Those are the two notes that are added. These two notes are added to the hamburger, taking it from the five note pentatonic to the four to, to the full seven notes. And also note that that B is the added one that's really uh, uh, an important one for Phrygian because it's the fifth of the Phrygian, meaning it's going to be in the the minor uh, the minor triad that we would make. And then whereas whereas the F isn't really uh, there in the minor triad, although I would also argue that the F is also really important though because that's the minor second which is the so even though it's not in the triad it's the distinguishing characteristic of the phrygian uh so both those notes i think are important to add if you want to get the phrygian sound from the pentatonic because because you want to get that 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 that, that sound for the second is kind of the Phrygian thing. That's the thing. All right. So then let's do the intervals. Let's do the intervals. We're going to go from uh, here to here. Let's do this. So we're going to go to the second of the Phrygian. Let's bring this up here. Oh, let's do our whole steps and half steps first. If I, if I was going, if I was here, boom, boom, I'm going to go from the first of the Phrygian to the second of the Phrygian, that's right where you have your funny half step. So if I compare the Phrygian to the related minor, the one interval that's different is the second interval, and that's going to be the a minor second away. That means that, of course, I have to do a, a step from one to two that's different than the related, the related major. And then to get back into sync with the related, not sorry, with the related minor, to get back into sync with the related minor, I also have to do another step that's different. It's staggered off from the related minor. When I go from the second to uh, the third, and and so that's going to be and that gets me back into the normal sequence. So that's going to be uh, a whole step. And then we're going to go from the third to the fourth of the Phrygian, which is going to be a whole step. And then we're going to go from the fourth to the fifth of the Phrygian which is going to be a whole step because it's basically pinky to pointer if I was to reposition my fingers. And then we're going to go from the fifth to the sixth. Notice I'm in the house here. That's where the half steps are. That's going to be a half step. And then I'm going to go from uh, the sixth to the seven, which is a whole step. And then we're going to go to from the seven to the eight, which is a whole step. So we will recall that the Phrygian, like I think all minor modes, has a whole step going from the seven to the eight, to, so it doesn't have that leading tone as as like the C major over here does, and that's something that you can always add to give you kind of like a pull. That's a note that you might consider adding right before you go home uh, to 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 give you that pull. And then where are my half steps? Well. We're starting at the bottom of the box. You can see right here, and the box are where the half steps are at. So if I'm starting here at the bottom of the box, then there's gonna be two notes before I get to another box. There are two notes in between before I get to another box. So the one to the two, that's the crazy half step, which is Phrygian. And then you've got three, four, and then, then five to six. So one, two, five, six, one, two, five, six. Those are where uh, the half steps are at. All right, let's go and do our uh, intervals. So if I go from the first of the Phrygian to the second of the Phrygian, that's gonna be a one note away minor second. That's the, that's the defining, the defining <coughs> interval. 
uh, there. And, and what's the inverse of that? That's going to be 12 minus 1, which is 11. So if I see that interval, I go boom, 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 boom. So that's going to be the one note away minor second. But if I went backwards from F to E, therefore, that's an 11 note away, which would be a major 7. Remembering that the inverse of a minor is typically a major. The inverse of a major, therefore, is typically a minor. So then let's go to, oh, also, the second of absolute mode number three, Phrygian, is, remember the counting system, the third I'm calling it absolute mode number three as it relates to the related major scale. So if the major scale Ionian was one, then you go two, three, which is three, but it's two notes up. So it's two notes away from the one. So that means the formula would be three minus one gives me the two notes away to get to that three. And then I take the second and add it to it. So that would be two plus two gives me four. Absolute mode number four is what I call the Lydian mode. And the Lydian mode is a major mode given the fact that it has an uppercase Roman numeral. And if I look at my analogies over here, I'm gonna to go to the bottom because you can see it's the double stop box. We're at the bottom of the double stop box. And you can see where does it live? It lives in the house, in C's house or in the major's house but and it's a major scale and it's looking towards the ocean but it's on the ground floor it's not the main major in fact i think it's the least used major mode in my opinion because first you have the major scale and then the mixolydian which is kind of like the bluesy scale and then the the lydian and therefore it's actually if you think about the hamburger analogy that's the one that's not in the pentatonic the lydian's been kicked out so unless we need our baseball cap on because the sun's out, then we would re we would remove the Lydian. Now, of course, it's important if we're if we're in the Phrygian mode to add the Lydian to add the F in this case because that is the distinctive half step <laughs> that makes the Phrygian sound like Phrygian. So I kind of think you need it, uh, but there it is. So that's how we can build it from there. Let's go to the to the next one, the third. So now we're gonna say uh, the third is gonna go from here to here. The third of a Phrygian, uh, by definition, because Phrygian is a minor mode, the third must be a minor third. That's the defining interval making a mode major or minor. Inverse, well, how do I know it's a minor third? Because if I go down here, this is gonna be five, uh, four, three. I also just wanna see that shape from, so if I'm in ring to pointer, that's the comfortable way to play it. You can play it like this or like this if you needed to, but comfortable way to play it would be the most comfortable rate would be ring to pointer. That's I just want to start to memorize that that shape is a minor third as a, as opposed to this shape, which would be, you know, like a like middle finger to pointer. I could play that multiple ways too, right? But if I played it like with my main two fingers, that would be the major third. So I'm just gonna start to memorize that shape. If I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a minor third versus up here, which would be a major third. So then I'm gonna go, okay, inverse, 12 minus three is gonna be nine. That would be a nine note away, uh, major six, six. So if I see that shape, I play top to bottom, I'm just going like, yeah, that's a minor third. That's a three note away minor third. Therefore, if I play from bottom to top, G to E, that's a nine note away, uh, major six. How do I know that? Because if I find this G over here, there's a G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine gets me to the E. Therefore, if I played this in a circle, you can go one way around the circle or the other way around the circle. You're just going around the circle when you think about it as tones, which is like, dude, I'm just going around in circles all day long, from day to day, from week to week, from month to month. It's just circles. And it's like, yeah, that's cool. I'm cool running laps. I can run laps. It's, that's my thing. Okay, so then we're gonna go. <clears throat> we're gonna go then the third of the Phrygian. Uh, what is gonna be the three minus two is one plus three gives me the mode, which is mode number five, mixolydian, which is a major mode given the fact that it's an uppercase Roman numeral and and. Where is that found? In our double stop house analogy or house analogy, I'll call it. 
it's not in the house, even though it's a major mode, because it does its own thing, because it's got the minor seven, it's like that more uh, minor mo mode. So it hangs out here in the double stop, the flat with the main minor, the minor scale. And, uh, and so that's where it's currently at. And then it hangs up at, at the double stop with the house double stop shape uh, with the Dorian. And if I think of the hamburger, I think of it as the meat of the hamburger. So obviously the Mixolydian being the second uh, most popular mode is in the five note pentatonic. It hasn't been kicked out. And it's what I would call, if I think of a hamburger being like an American food, the meat of the hamburger is like the Mixolydian, which has the flat seven, which would be the bluesy thing given the American like flavor. I, and I'm only doing this American thing because it that I'm trying to make a story that fits in my mind. So I'm not trying to like, you might not think of it that way. Of course, I don't know, you know, it's, but I'm just trying to come up with a story. And then the minor is the other main minor that has that flat seven. So to me, these are my favorite two major and minor, and it's the meat of the hamburger. Okay. Let's go to the next one. And now we're going to go to the next one, which we're calling the fourth, the fourth of the, uh, <clears throat> the, the mode number three Phrygian, the fourth of a Phrygian is, is the normal fourth, which is going to be a five note away. Perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because the distance between two strings is five notes, unless we're at the fault line. The inverse of that would be 12 minus five or seven, which would be a seven note away perfect fifth. So whenever I see that shape, I'm always gonna see, oh, they're stacked on each other like that. So if I play that from top to bottom, like I normally would, that's a fourth, five note away perfect fourth. But if I invert it, therefore, that must be a seven note away perfect fifth because the sevenths are inverts or the perfects are inverts of each other. The, the fourth of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus one, gives me two plus four gives me six, which is mode number six, Aeolian, otherwise known as the main minor mode. You can see it's minor given the fact that it has a lower, uh, a lower case Roman numeral, whereas the main minor found in our analogy, it doesn't hang out in the house. It's not in the house because it's a minor, it does its own thing. Only the Phrygian still hangs out in the house because it just likes pissing off uh, the Lydian in the basement by rocking out with its amplifier. So, but the main minor moved out, it's over here in the flat, the one shape that's the same between our uh, two, two, one breakout house analogy versus our three, two string breakout for the hamburger and barbell analogy. In terms of the hamburger, it's in once again, the meat of the hamburger. Obviously it's within the five note pentatonic of the seven notes because it's the main minor. You can't kick out the main minor if you're making a pentatonic. That's gotta be in. That's gotta be in. All right, <clears throat> you kick out the Locrian. That's the weird one. You're like, you're, we know who's gonna get kicked out when, when you go to the, it's the dude hanging in the attic for God's sake. Okay, <laughs> but the Locrian's still cool. I still like the Locrian. You just gotta know how, you just don't know how he is, man. You just need to know you just don't understand the Locrian. He's actually a good person. Okay, so let's go to the next one. We're going to go then to the fifth. So the fifth is going to be, uh, wait, the fifth is out here. Now I'm trying to be within the hamburger, but it's outside the hamburger. The fifth is right there. Okay, so then we're going to say the fifth uh, is out here, and it's going to be a seven note away perfect fifth for the mode three Phrygian, the fifth is normal uh, for the mode. And how do I know that? Because I can count down five, 10, nine, eight, seven. I also just want to start seeing that shape as like, that's the perfect, uh, that's the perfect fifth. And the reason that's important is because this shape is common, whether you're talking about a minor or major scale, because the one, three, five are in the major triads. So you can see you know, if this was a ma if this was a minor, we saw that this was the minor third from here to here. So if I played it this way, reaching up, then this would naturally be the fifth. And this is actually 
the most natural way to play or makes most sense when you play your triads because all the triads are like in order. The, the first is the lowest note. It's not inverted or anything, right? The third is the next lowest and then the fifth. So, th so this actually, even though it's not the most comfortable way to play, oftentimes your triads, it makes the most sense in that they're not in some weird inversion uh, which we often do on the guitar. We we just play it. We, we grab them wherever we can grab them, right? Whether it's inverted or not, right? We're just trying to get the thing to get the three notes in there. But if it was the major, then it would be this one and then this one and this one. And the fifth is the same. So, so I want to be able to recognize, oh, yeah, that's the fifth. That's always going to be there whether I have a minor third or whether I have a major third. And so I'm just going to hopefully start to recognize that. Oh, that's my seven note away, uh, perfect fifth. Uh, and so it sounds like this. And so the invert of that must be then from bottom to top, a five note away, perfect fourth. Therefore, the fifth of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus two, three minus one, which is two, plus five, which is seven. That gives us the Locrian, mode number seven, loco Locrian. Now, where does that live in our analogy? Well, it's in the house, if we think about our house analogy, so it's always gonna be in this box, and it's in the basement, which is the back left, not towards the ocean, it doesn't have the ocean view, it's in the back basement of the box. And if I look at my uh, hamburger analogy, then we're, we're at, here's the, the pentatonic, which is in the hamburger, and of course, the Locrian got kicked out of the pentatonic because it's the crazy Locrian. And everybody's like, dude, we know, like if I have to only hang out with five, with seven people, I can stand dealing with that guy. But if I have to deal with only five people, then then I can't, then that's gonna make it so I have to spend more time with the crazy Locrian. And he's okay, but he's just weird, you know? So we they kicked him out. So it's on the outside here. So I think of it as like the support of the hamburger. So if you want to go from the hamburger five notes and add the two extra notes, you put the baseball cap on the hamburger, which puts a, another build to the front. So the sun, so when they're looking at the sun, but the baseball cap bill is really heavy. So you need the added support on the back to support so that you don't get front heavy and fall over. And that's what the B is doing here, or the Locrian It's supporting the main support of the hamburger, which is, of course, the major scale. It needs a little extra oomph, a little extra support, or else the hamburger falls over. That's the story, and, the, and that's going to be the Locrian. Okay, so then let's go to the next one. We're going to go to the sixth of the mode number three, Phrygian, which is going to be a eight note away minor six it's a minor uh mode a minor interval which we would expect in a minor mode and how do i know that because if i can count down five ten <clears throat> nine eight inverse and so so if i see that interval like that's an eight note away now that is a little bit more funny of an interval to play so the way we might see that of course is to say well this interval is quite normal the one we did before which is a seven note away perfect fifth and then the one up above it is gonna be eight notes away. So if I see that interval, I might compare it to the ones I play more often and say, okay, that one's a little weird. What's the one that's not weird? This one, that's a seven note away, perfect fifth. So this one must be an eight note away, which is often gonna be the, we name it the minor sixth, right? And so then I'm gonna say the, 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 the inverse is 12 minus eight, which is four, which would be a four note away major third, remembering that the inverse of a minor m s distance is usually a major, right? So if I go from E to C, that's gonna be an eight note away minor six, but if I go from C to E, that's a four note away major third. All right, the sixth of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus two is uh, one plus six, uh is uh three minus two i'm sorry three minus one is two plus six is eight but there's only seven modes therefore eight minus seven is one so this is going to be mode number one otherwise known as the aeolian or major scale so where does it live well it lives of course in the house it's always at the top right of the box it's always at the top right of the box 
And if I look at my hamburger analogy, it's at the base of the hamburger. I think of it as the main supporting structure of the hamburger, giving it the weight it needs, even if the baseball cap is making it lean top heavy uh, to the front. This, this is such a, a core component that it's holding the hamburger together, holding it down. All right, so then we're gonna go to the next one. This is gonna be the seventh, the seventh of mode number three, uh, Phrygian which is going to be uh, a, a proper interval for the seventh, which is a 10 note away uh, minor seven. So that's gonna be here. So I've st I wanna start to see this shape. Whenever I see that shape, I'm like, oh, that's a 10 note away minor seven, unless it's over the, the, uh, the fault line down here. And so how do I know that? Well, I can count it, that'd be five, 10. So it's straight, you know, pretty easy to count five, 10. Uh, would be that, and then the inverse would be 12 minus 10, which would be two, two note away, major second. So if I see this shape, I'm like, oh yeah, that's a 10 note away, minor seven. And the inverse of that, therefore, this is a 10 note away, minor seven. I think I got that right. The inverse would be a two note away, major second. The seventh of the mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus one, which is two plus seven gives me nine, nine, there's only seven modes, so nine minus seven is two. That gives me absolute mode number two, which is the Dorian mode. So that's gonna be uh, the, the, the Dorian mode. And where does the Dorian live? Well, it's a minor mode, given the fact that it has a, a, minor, a minor number here. Therefore, it's not in the house because it's only the Phrygian that lives in the basement on the minors. So it hangs out on its own over here uh, with, uh, in this case, on the double stop with the, uh, with the uh, Mixolydian. And then, and so, and then it's always in the double stop. So then it's in the double stop bit here, double stop house with the, so then it's with the main minor over here. If I think about the hamburger shape, the, the Dorian actually encompasses the bun of the hamburger. So you can actually define the hamburger with the Dorian because I can define the square in Excel by that cell to that cell, right? So that's actually, the Dorian is actually defining the entire hamburger uh, that way. So you can see it that way. Uh, and so then, then that's that. And then we go back to uh, the octave up top. So that's the other thing we probably want to start saying that that shape is the octave, which is a little wonky for me oftentimes to see that shape because you don't always play kind of like the octave like that. But I want to basically see how I can go from here to here very, very easily. Usually the octave from here to here is like kind of easy for most people. Going this way is a little bit wonky, especially because I'm traveling down three strings. So if I move this down just one more string, then it's going to get thrown off because of the because of the kink in the tuning. So a lot of people don't quite know this distance as well as they do when they go forward to this distance. All right, let's go back the other way. But before we do, <clears throat> I'll try a joke here. Again, this is just my practice jokes. So if they're not good, then that's okay. This is my this is my my practice session. So it's like I'm getting so tired of the government pretending they can solve everyone's problems, you know? The government's like, we could solve all your problems. Like, honestly, you know, the government can't solve you. The government solving your problem is like, would be like if you were missing a sock and you said something like, hey, I need another, I need another sock. And then the government, and then the government socked you in the face, you know? It's like, I need a sock. And then they socked you in the face. And it's like, that's not helpful. That's not helpful, you know? I mean, actually, it's not really like that because those sneaky jerks government people will probably, they'll probably just give you a cheap sock and then, and then spend a bunch of money lining their own pockets after they gave you some cheap sock resulting in the next future sock you need to cost 10 times as much, you know, due to inflation. They're like, they're like okay, I'll give, you, I'll give you a sock you need today so long as you pay 10 times for the sock you'll need tomorrow. You know, I ain't, I ain't falling for it this time, man. I ain't falling for this government helping me out stuff. This is not, this is, this is a trap. It's a trap. 
I'm not, I'm good, you know, I'm good with just one sock. I don't even need two socks. Keeping one foot barefoot gives me more traction anyways. Helping me not to fall for this free sock today for no sock sorrow tomorrow crap, you know? I mean, how, how many times do I need to see this story play out before I see the pattern? So it's like the old saying goes, fool me once and, and shame, on, shame on you. Fool me twice and I still, I still kind of think it's your fault, you know? But, but fool, fool me every day for like 50 odd years and I feel like I need, to ta- I need to take a little responsibility for the situation here, dang it. That's what I feel like. That's... Anyways, that's how the saying goes. All right. It needs work. It needs work. I'm going to, let's go back the other way here. So let's go back the other way. So going back the other way now. So we're going to be down here. We're at the, we're at the bottom. Oh no. We're at the bottom of what I call the, uh, double, the, the, the house, the house double stop. Or in terms of our hamburger barbell analogy, we're in the barbell, which is shifted up because of the of the earthquake or fault line here. So normally you would have the end of the barbell, like the weight of the barbell would have the A underneath it, but it's been shifted up over here. And so we're at the top left uh, of the barbell in our pentatonic shape. Remember, we only play the outer bits of the shape if we're playing the pentatonic. And then we need to add the inner bits of the shape if we're going to go from the pentatonic to the major. And it's going to be a staggered handle on the barbell uh, that, we, that we have to play the, the inner bits. All right, so we'll get into that. So if I was to say we go from here and then we're going to go down to here. So then we're going to go boom, boom, boom. So now we're at the top of what I would call the house double stop or the bottom of the bottom bun of the hamburger where we had to add to the left of it uh to the to the base of it if we want to go from a five note pentatonic to a seven note major and then we go to the meat of the hamburger boom boom the meat of the hamburger being the same shape you can call it the flat uh of our house analogy where we only have the one string so it's the shape it's the same under both analogies and then up top we've got then the boom, 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 which would be the, the bottom. You can see it down here because this bottom string is also up here of the double stop house shape. It's also the top bun of the hamburger. So if I was to count that, then we could say starting from here, if that was the eight, uh, the eight right here, it would be eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Okay, and then, so then I'm gonna say, all right, Let's do our, our, uh, did I go, th- yeah, let's go back now. So we're gonna go back comparing to this one. Uh, we're always gonna be comparing to this shape, which is a little like in reverse. So if I went from eight or one down to the seventh, then the seventh is gonna be back here. And we know the seventh of a Phrygian because it's a minor mode is a 10 note away minor seven. And uh, how do I know that? Because if I counted from the D up, it would be five, uh, four, three, two. So this shape, normally when I see it, is a two note away, uh, two note away major second. And I know that because pinky to pointer, that shape, unless I'm in the fault line down here, is a whole step or a two note away major second. And then 10, 12 minus two is 10. Therefore, the inverse, if I go from E up, is going to be a 10 note away minor 7. All right, so then if I go down, let's just crank these out, see if I can do them a little bit faster here. We're going to go down to here, which is going to be the 6th. The 6th of mode number 3, Phrygian, is a proper interval for a minor, an 8 note away minor 6. How do I know that? Because if I count it from the C down, it would be, uh, it would be 5 and then 4. So that's going to be a four note away major third. So if I see that shape, I'm always thinking from top to bottom from the C. Oh, that's my major third shape. So I just want to see that shape and say, yeah, major third. Uh, I don't even really need to count it, but I could count it if I needed to. And then the inverse is going to be 12 minus uh, four, which is eight. 
Therefore, the inverse from bottom to top, E to C, is uh, an eight note away minor six. All right, let's go back another one and take it back to the fifth. So the fifth of the mode number three, Phrygian, is a normal fifth for most modes, five note away, or seven note away, perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I count from the B down, whenever I see that shape, I'm usually going from top to bottom saying, well, that's gonna be five notes away. I mean, from top to bottom would be a five note away. That would be a perfect fourth. 12 minus five is seven. Therefore, if I go from bottom to top, that must be a seven note away perfect fifth because the perfects are inverts of each other. Don't let the fact that it's five notes of a perfect fourth compared to seven notes for the perfect fifth, two fives and those two gets confusing. And I still get, if I say it backwards or get it mixed up, I apologize because it is a little, it's a little confusing. So, but then we're gonna go here and now we're on, uh, wait, I should have gone to, uh, 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 now I got stuck here. I'm on the seventh, which I already did that, which was the B, uh, the seventh, and now I'm going to the C here. So we're going from, to no, I'm going back the other way. That's why I got mixed up. I'm going down to the A. All right, hopefully, I, hopefully I'm back on track. Back on track. So the A is going to be uh, boom, boom. So that's going to be the fourth, which is going to be a five note away, perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I count down this way from the A, it would be five, ten, nine, eight, seven. So when I see that shape, I'm usually measuring from here, and that's our familiar seven note away, perfect, uh, seven note away, perfect fifth. And that's the one that if I, I can play either a major or a minor, depending and I'd still have the same fifth, right? If the, it, would, it would be the, the minor would be here in the mid. So I'd still have that fifth. And, and therefore the inverse of that has to be 12 minus seven, which would be a five note away, perfect fourth. So if I play from top to bottom, seven note away, perfect fifth. From bottom to top, five note away, perfect fourth. All right, let's go down to the third. The third is going to be to do it from here to here. And that's going to be the third is the defining interval of a minor Phrygian mode, which is going to be, therefore, a three note away minor third. How do I know that? I'm counting to this one up here. So if I say this is five, ten, nine, going this way, then nine note away major six. So I'm seeing that shape from top to bottom. I want to see that, oh, that's a nine note away major six. Therefore, the inverse 12 minus nine is a four note away, uh, is a three note away minor third, going from bottom to top, E to G, three note away minor third. And then I'm going uh, to the second, to the second, and that's gonna be up here. And so that's kind of a, a reach, uh, noting that I'm, I'm comparing to this E down here. I could compare it to this E, right? That would make it a little easier, but I'm comparing it down here that's going to be the second, the funny interval, one note away, minor second. How do I know that? Well, if I count from this F, I go uh, 5, 10, 15, and then 14, 13, 12, 11. So that shape from here to here, that reach is 11 note away. Oh, 11 note away, uh, uh, <laughs> major seven. Therefore, the inverse bottom to top must be a one note away uh, minor second. And then we go back to the octave. All right, let's go back up this way. Let's go from this E here to this E down here so we can practice our intervals as we deal with the fault line uh, that because of the earthquake that happened. So now we're gonna start here. So this is on the, what I would call the bottom square of the house of the Phrygian, or we can call it the top of the barbell. So top left of the barbell for the pentatonic, it's in the pentatonic. And then, and then the other shape is gonna be down here, which is equivalent to this top bit here. So we could say what happens here, we go from 
Oh no, that's the wrong one. Z, I want to get the yellow one. How do I know I'm on the yellow one? Oh man. We're going to go from here. So it goes. Duh, duh, duh. So now we're in the barbell. Now notice as I play along the barbell, that middle bit, if it was the pentatonic, would be removed. Right? That's the one that would be removed. We would only play the ends of the barbell. That's what we have to add to go from the pentatonic to the major. Then we have to go up the fault line up the invisible curve which means up to the left and then boom 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 again pentatonic would only be the ends of these shape so we'd be adding the b here which would be the crazy locrian mode and then we go boom down to here and then and then duh duh which means now we're at the bottom ending off uh, down here which is the top bun of the hamburger which is going to be a repeated up top okay so then let's say let's do our intervals and go ch -ch -ch intervals let's do this again let's see if i can do it a little bit faster here intervals will be a little different though because of that earthquake fault line so one to the two so first to the second the second is the defining interval of the phrygian making it different than the related or main minor mode it has the minor uh, second making it more minor than the main minor scale so that's going to be boom boom if i went the other way that would be 11 minus uh one which would be 11 i mean sorry 12 minus one which would be 11 and that would be 11 note away major seven so if i go from here to here e to f one note away minor second from f to e 11 note away major seven okay and then i'm gonna go and i also know that the second is let's do this again three uh the major the third mode minus one is two plus two gives me mode number four the lydian mode and the lydian mode in my opinion is the least used major mode you have the major scale then the mixolydian and then the lydian and that's why it's been removed or booted out of the five note pentatonic so this is the one that you would have to add back in because usually you would only play the ends of the barbell part of the pentatonic shape and now you're adding back in this one in terms of the house analogy it's always at the bottom of the house it's it's not at the penthouse but it's still in the major scales house and it's looking towards the ocean to the front of the house and it's getting annoyed by phrygian that's back in the basement blaring it's it's metal stuff with that minor second that kind of bugs it kind of bugs lydian okay and then we're going to go to the next one and we're going to say we have the third the third and the third of phrygian being a defining interval for a minor mode a minor mode has to have a minor third which of course it does three note away minor third and the inverse would be 12 minus three which would be a nine note away major uh nine note away major ninth so if i go from here to here that shape of course i just want to see that shape as when i'm reaching to my pinky i'm not reaching way up here but right there is a three note away uh minor third and the inverse therefore from here to here nine note away major six remembering that the inverse of a minor is a major and the inverse of a major is typically a minor the third of mode number three phrygian is three minus one is two plus three is five that's going to be absolute mode number five which is the mixolydian mode which is a major mode but it doesn't live in the c's house because it's got that flat seven so it hangs out with the minor so in the house analogy it's over here with the dorian hanging in the double stop and then it hangs out in the two note per string flat in terms of the hamburger barbell analogy it's on the right side of the barbell which usually would be the usually these two would be on top of each other the g and the c over here which are the weights on the right side of the barbell which is the major side of the barbell having the two most important weights so it would be in the pentatonic uh in there and it's on the right side the two most important weights on the major side of things being the major scale and the mixolydian in my opinion or at least in my story as i'm trying to get a story to visualize this all right let's go to the next one we've got the fourth the fourth of the 
the fourth of the mode number three Phrygian is a uh, five note away perfect fourth. Now here's where we're going across the fault line, which messes everything up because normally I would say a five note away perfect fourth should be right underneath it. But now I've got this stagger thing that only happens between these two strings. So I've got to remember that everything's shifted up. So that looks like it's a flat five or an augmented fourth, but no, it's a normal perfect fourth. I can see that just because th from here to here with that fault line is five notes away. Uh, from here to here is four notes away with the fault line, whereas the distance between every other string is five notes away. So it's a five note away, perfect fourth. Inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be a seven note away, perfect fifth. So if I go from here to here, that's gonna be a five note away, perfect fourth. Inverse therefore, is a seven note away perfect fifth. So I just gotta remember, don't let that throw me off that usually the perfect fourth is when they're stacked on top of each other. That's the norm, this is the exception. So then, and I also know that the fourth of mode number three Phrygian is three minus one, which is two plus four, gives me four, five, uh, three, three minus two is, <laughs> three minus one is two, plus four gives me six, which is the Aeolian mode, the main minor. The minor mode, of course, isn't in the house, in the house analogy, because it's a minor. Only the Phrygian minor hangs out in the basement. This one's over here uh, on the minors, hanging out in the double stop side with D, and then it hangs out in the two note per string hamburger or flat. In the hamburger barbell analogy, it's on the left side, which is the two main or heaviest weights, in my opinion, of the minor. It has the Phrygian and it has the, the uh, main minor. Now the Dorian is probably more popular of a mode than the Phrygian, but I think if you think of the weight analogy, the Phrygian is heavier because it's actually more minor than the minor mode. It's got that flat, uh, that flat second, whereas the Dorian is, is actually, I guess, the closest to the major, even though it's kind of a sad sounding mode because it has the major second and then it has another uh, major in it, right? So it's got like two, two majors. The minor mode only has one major and then the Phrygian's all minor, baby, except for, you know, it's got the perfects in there, but it's, it's got no major stuff. Okay, so that's the story. So then I'm gonna go to the next one. Uh, we're on the fifth. We're on the fifth of uh, mode number three, fifth of mode number three, and that's gonna be uh, a seven note away perfect fifth. And how do I know that? Because if I count up, it'd be five to here because of the fault line, six, seven. So this one, when you look at it, you're like, ah, it's the perfect fifth should be here, but no, the fault line brings it up to, to here. So, okay, that makes sense. And then we'll say the inverse would be 12 minus five, which would be uh, which would be 12 minus seven, which would be five, which would be a five note away perfect four. So I see that I'm like, okay, yeah, that shape because of the fault line, seven note away perfect fifth, inverse five note away perfect fourth. And the fifth of mode number three, Phrygian is three minus one is two plus five is seven. And that gives me mode number seven, the crazy Locrian uh, mode. There's crazy Locrian, where is it located? Well, the Locrian's in the house, but it's up in the attic of the house on the upper left-hand side, not facing the ocean, but the utility plant on the left of the guitar. Or in our, uh, our hamburger barbell analogy, it's obviously kicked out of the five note pentatonic scale. That's the first one you would think would be kicked out the Locrian mode. And it's right next to the C. So it's, on, it's like supporting the C side so it's where, like if you're picking up the barbell and it's where your right hand would go on the barbell, but noting that there's a stagger between where your hands go on the barbell, you've got this one up top and then this one's down here, which is a little wonky to see because of the kink in the tuning, because of the fault line, because of the earthquake. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to the sixth of the Phrygian mode number three and that's gonna be a normal minor for, for a minor mode, which would be a eight note away minor six. That one we probably don't play as much. So when I see that, I'm probably thinking, what is that? 
and I'm probably thinking, well, there's the fifth. Uh, that's a seven note away fifth. Therefore, that's an eight note away, which would be a minor six is how I might go up about seeing what that is. And the inverse would be 12 minus, uh, 12 minus eight, which would be a four note away major fourth. So if I go from here to here, uh, eight note away major six, minor six, going from bottom to top, four note away major fourth. Okay, and the sixth of mode number three, Phrygian, is three minus one, which is two, plus six, which would be eight, minus the fact that there's only seven modes, which would be uh, one, and that would be, of course, mode one, Ionian mode, otherwise known as the major scale. Where is it located in the house analogy? It's at the top right of the house, penthouse, looking towards the ocean. In the pentatonic hamburger barbell shape. Of course, it's included in our five note pentatonic. It hasn't been kicked out because it's the main major, uh, but it's, and it's on the right hand side of the barbell, the bottom, the, the heaviest weight of the barbell at the bottom of the barbell next to, and the top of the barbell is the mixolydian, the two most used majors. And then the lydian has been left out uh, in the dust if you're trying to kick it out of the five note pentatonic, although you might need it if you're playing Phrygian. Okay, and so then we're gonna go to, to the next one, which is gonna be the seventh, and I'm comparing this to this. That's gonna be a, a 10 note away minor seven, which is normal for a minor mode. Normally the seven would be right here, like back here. So I'm not going to let that throw me off. I'm still up the fault line. Now remember, there's not a fault line between these two strings. It's just between these two strings. So, so the fault, but because this is above the fault line, we have this kink. So it should be back here, but it's up here. So that's cool. All right. So how can I count that? Because it would be five up to here and then 10 down to here. And the inverse would be 12 minus 10, which would be two. So if I see that shape, I'm like, oh yeah, because of the fault line from E to D, that would be a 10 note away minor seven. Inverse from D to E would be a two note away major second. And that brings us back to the octave. All right, let's go backwards maybe if I have time, but let's try another joke. Uh, let's see. You know, you know, parents are often trying to keep their children in tow, right? They're trying to keep their children in tow, but it, if you want to keep someone in tow, you you really need to wash your feet. You know what I mean? Because because nobody, not even children, want to be in in a stinky toe, right? Nobody wants to be in a stinky toe. If you're going to be in tow, at least you'd like to be in like a non-stinky toe. So I mean, if you do have, if you don't wash your feet right and you're trying to keep people in tow it just takes it takes way more it takes way more to keep people in tow when your feet are stinky like like you'll need to depend on having sharp toenails then if you want to keep them in tow and and nobody likes nobody likes to have to deal with with sharp toenails okay that was just really dumb i don't know that's all I've got. I think there I can make it better. That's just 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 the rough draft, okay? It's just the rough draft. Let's go back the other way. Uh We're going to say You know, I think I'm a little tired here. What are we on? It's been a while. Let's stop it here. I'm going to stop it here. So let's play the Phrygian. Thank you.